Eric Burgess here. We are told to sketch an angle of theta in standard position with least positive measure, and then to find the six trig functions, and we're given a coordinate, negative five comma zero. So first off, let's just start by sketching this point. So we're just going to make a coordinate axis here. We're going to have our y and our x axis. And the point negative five comma zero is right here. Negative five comma zero, that's the point. Now, we need to draw out our angle, so I'm going to do it in red so we can see it. So this red bit is our, is our angle, and we need to label it. So we start at the zero degree line and come down to this ray, and we're gonna call this the angle theta. And looking at this, we know that a straight line, when we go across like this, is going to have 180 degrees or pi radians. So knowing this, we know that there are several special circumstances that arise that we can use to find the different trig angles, but this is our, this is our sketch with least positive measure. If it asked for least negative measure, we would just go the other way. We'd go like this and we'd have theta and then that would be equal to negative 180 degrees or negative pi radians. It would just simply change direction. So that would be if we were doing the negative case. So the lack of a triangle throws some people off, but because there's a lack of triangle, we can actually determine what theta is directly, and we can use this to evaluate the different things. So we've got sine of theta, sine of theta, and we've got, so the inverse of that's gonna be cosecant of theta. We've got cosine of theta. And the inverse of that's gonna be secant of theta. Then we've got tangent of theta. And we've got cotangent of theta. Now, for each of these, we can tell what they are simply by having memorized 180 degrees or pi. When you plug in pi radians, you know what comes out. But I do not like uh, doing it this way because it's what if you forget? Like it's really easy to forget. So there's actually a pretty simple derivation. Whenever we're measuring our angle from the middle like this, a some common definitions pop out. So let's just say I've got like some angle like this. So theta would come up like this. And so we'll have r, we'll have some x value, right? We move over on the x-axis, and we'll have some y-axis value as well. And so this, we can call this side just y. So sine of theta, sine of theta, right? If you know Soka Toa, that's opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite's y of this, and the hypotenuse is r. Cosine of theta is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, or x over r, and tangent of theta was going to be opposite over adjacent or y over x. And knowing these and their reciprocals will give us all these different definitions up here. And so we're gonna use we're gonna use this information to do this. So we say, okay, well sine of theta, if you know that if what is a sine of pi? Well you know if you put in pi you're gonna get zero out. But why do you get zero out? Well let's look at this. Well, y, well, we don't go up or down at all. So, and if we look at this, this is x comma y, the y coordinate is zero, meaning we don't go up or down at all, x comma y. So we're going to have y over r, which will be zero, and then r is the distance that we traveled. It's the radius. So r is the length uh, that we went. So we went a length of five. It's going to be positive five because it's a distance. So even though we're going the negative direction, we went a distance of five. So we're going to get sine of, uh, sine of theta or sine of pi is going to be zero. And so there's a way to do it with the formula. Now, if we go ahead and flip this, we're going to get five over zero. Well, when zero's on the bottom, that's undefined. So we're going to get undefined. And I like doing it this way, and if you can't remember, just draw out this picture right here, uh, because this way we can very easily see why things are the way they are, why one zero and the other is undefined. 
So now we're going to do cosine. Well, that's going to be x over r. So x, well, that's negative 5. r is 5. And we're, so we're going to get negative 1. And if we flip it, we're going to get 5 over negative 5, which will still be negative 1. For tangent, that's y over x. Well, y is 0. x is negative 5. So we're going to get 0. But if we flip this for cotangent, we're going to get negative 5 over 0, which is undefined because 0 is in the bottom. Who the heck knows what happens when you divide by 0? It's some mysterious thing. So we put undefined. Now the one caveat of, of doing it this way, because this when you use these definitions, is that your angle has to be measured from the center here, meaning the, the angle has to be in here. If we were to measure our angle from up here, that would change all of these definitions. Uh, let me draw it in red so you can see it. If we define theta to be here instead, well then Soka Toa would tell us a bunch of different things. The y would become x, and the x would become y. So it's it's conditional that we have our, our theta on the inside here when we use these. Uh, but that's going to be the case very often. And you'll soon find out why when we talk about the unit circle, and we start using the unit circle to do things. But this would be how you would do the various definitions and why some of them would be undefined. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos, and we'll catch you in the next problem.